Welcome to the Tourism News Wrap. My name is Jason Amu. Coming up, Kenya and Rwanda announces resumption of international flights. ICCA elects new leaders for Africa chapter. Sarova Hotels set to reopen to guests and Ethiopian Airlines announces resumption of regular service. Kenya and Rwanda have announced resumption of passenger flight services to the East African nations effective August 1. Rwanda's Ministry of Infrastructure last week issued a statement to that effect. In the release, it required a potential passenger to take a COVID test 72 hours before boarding a flight to Kigali and upon arrival, expected to take another test to guarantee admission into the country. President Uhuru Kenyatta on Tuesday, July 7, announced July 15 and August 1 as a date for the opening of borders for domestic and international flights respectively during an address to the nation. That local air travel within the territory of the Republic of Kenya shall resume effective Wednesday the 15th of July 2020 and again in strict conformity with all applicable guidelines and protocols from both the Ministry of Health and our civil aviation authorities. That international air travel into and out of the territory of the Republic of Kenya shall resume effective the 1st of August 2020, once again in strict conformity with all protocols from the Ministry of Health, local as well as international civil aviation authorities and any additional requirements applicable at the ports of departure, arrival or transit. As tourism activities resume gradually in Africa, Somalia's Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism is coordinating with key stakeholder agencies in the sector to institute the necessary health and safety protocols to revive the sector. Here is Yasser Bafo, Senior Tourism Advisor at the Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism. So far what we are doing is, uh, again, we reopen what they call the, the functions, like uh, Somali National Theatre was launched on 26th of June, where still we have the lockdown. We opened and we gather and we have the you know the, the live music band on the stage performing, and this was part of historical because 26 was uh, so not Somali Independence Day. That's where the all even the president himself who attended the the, the, the event. So you see, you know, uh, still people are demanding on tourism functions and going on events. It's happening. People are uh, what they call traveling by cars. So this. Uh, at least, you know, they are monitoring some, but the tourism is still active in Somalia. We are planning to have, uh, after officially Somalia announced that there is no uh, lockdown anymore, we are planning to organize uh, trips and, and events just to celebrate and people, you know, to let them know the, the value of tourism. Meanwhile, as Kenya readies for a restart of tourism activities, Sarova Hotels, a leading hotel group in the country, has instituted measures to guarantee the safety of its guests as well as its working staff. The hotel has been investing and working on assiduously during partial lockdown to ensure that it is prepared for the new normal in the hospitality subsector. The managing director of the group, Jimmy Kariuki, spoke to Tourism News Wrap. Uh, guidelines. Uh, social distancing, uh, we also introduced that very, very quickly. Um, so it's, it's obviously there is no script. This is something that's been very new for us, but we've done our best to safeguard uh, our employees and make sure that not just them, but also their families are safe. Uh, so as we stand now, uh, our properties are still not uh, operational uh, because um, we have some measures, uh, lockdown measures that are in place uh, by the government. So we are hoping that the president's announcement today uh, may give us an opportunity at least to restart some of our businesses so that we can continue to protect jobs and to protect wages, which has always been our priority and continues to be our priority. Toby Mutlabeni and Jacinta Nzioka have been elected as chapter chair and deputy respectively of the International Congress and Convention Association ICCA Africa region. The two are to steer the affairs of the Africa chapter for the next two years. 
Toby is the CEO of the Cape Town International Convention Center, while Jacinta leads the Kenyan National Convention Bureau as a national coordinator. Commenting on her election, Toby said, I am humbled by the faith that the members of the ICCA Africa chapter have put in me to lead the chapter for this period. My focus will be on utilizing the ICCA platform to empower the African members to enjoy a larger slice of the meeting's pie. South African hotel chain Bon Hotels has announced the reopening of five of its properties in South Africa. In compliance with the regulations of South Africa's Level 3 lockdown, the hotel has assured the general public of the measures put in place to reopen safely. The protocols that we have put in place uh, for our properties, we had a lot of time uh, during the lockdown to make sure that we are ready um, on the ground with all our general managers and the operations directors with rolling out health and safety protocols as according to World Health Organization and the tourism bodies where they have put in health and safety protocols by TBCSA as well being one of them. So we have made sure every step of the process is followed on every hotel that opens and the staff are ad adequately trained prior to the opening uh, to make sure that they follow up follow through on all the health and product health and safety protocols which have been put in place. As the meetings industry awaits with deep breath to restart the sector, a moderator and coach of the MICE sector in South Africa, Dami Inkadimeng, wants stakeholders to use the opportunity to sharpen their skills. Coronavirus is really our layover. There's a hustle and there's bustle and there's things happening that could very easily distract us or not um, keep us focused on the on the end destination. So I think it's imperative that people keep their, their talents, their skill sets sharpened in, in ways that are found in opportunities, whether on social media, whether through collaboration, whether through associations. But understanding that an end destination is in sight, it's a matter of figuring out how you are going to help yourself and your business the tourism private sector in Cote d'Ivoire is calling for a strong collaboration with the public sector to ensure that the tourism industry come out of the coronavirus pandemic strong. Donald Jobo, a tour operator in Abidjan, narrates how the pandemic has affected tourism SMEs and the way forward. We've been suffering a lot from lack of collaboration amongst actors in the industry, both from the private side and the public side. A lot of meetings have been going on uh, with the National Council of Tourism, with, uh, together with our Minister of Tourism and the Tourism Board to see how best government could help different actors like, our, like us to, to see how to get out of this uh, uh, particular economic situation that is downgrading by the day. Ethiopian Airlines has announced resumption of service to Dubai further to the ending of lockdown and its opening for leisure travellers as of July 8. These resumptions will bring the total number of destinations to be served by Ethiopia with enhanced safety measures to 40. As countries continue to open up their airports for passenger arrival, Ethiopia will announce lists of these destinations in due course. Face masks will be mandatory for travel and are requested to satisfy destination entry requirements such as health certificates and fill health declaration forms if required. Malawian President Lazarus Shakwera has appointed United Transformation Movement Vice Chair Michael Usi as his Minister of Tourism, Culture and Wildlife. The President released a full list of his cabinet on Wednesday, July 8. Michael Usi is a Malawian movie actor, playwright and musician. As an actor, he is most famously known for his role as Dr. Manga in the film Dr. Manga. There's more news on www.voyageafrique.com and all our social media platforms. My name is Jason Amu.